theirs. Mm. We've had BDS, they won theirs. Mm. We're now on to LFO, and next will come G2. So far, we've got one loss, one win. What are LFO going to do here? Because if either, if any of these teams loses both of their matches today and on the final play day, it opens the door for outsiders, for M&M to get in there. There's a world where both outsiders and M&M could potentially And what a world qualify. that'd be. I think if outsiders... No, they, no, they play no, on, they play on the last day. Well, mm, it gets tricky. No, it doesn't. They, they can't no, it does, because if it day. went to overtime and M&M won, then... They'd both Tim. end up on 13 Tim. points. Tim. Eminem and Outsiders would end up on 13. I can and hear, they I could can, arguably be up against other teams on 13. I can hear your brain breaking from it's, here. It's, it's whirling around, but it's very unlikely that we find ourselves in that situation. But still, as many wins as can be gained by teams like LFO and G2 is essential right now. So there is a lot at stake on this game. We've got the bands coming in. Flores, Vinca, Valkyrie, no major surprises there. Not at all. No, the Flores we spoke about quite a bit really becomes a team dependent sort of thing as to whether or not a team likes to run it, sometimes based on the map and the setups that you want to employ. And it's really at the minute we're seeing variants in attacker bands rather than really in defender bands. We're still seeing a lot of the, the go-to usual suspects on defense. I'm thinking of things like the Valkyrie, like the Mirror. Sometimes we'll lean if you're feeling a little bit spicy into something like a Wamai, but outside of that, it doesn't vary all that much. But let's see how things shape up because it's heroic starting on the attacking side. They're the ones who are going to have to run the gauntlet of Cafe first and foremost. On the desk, we briefly mentioned about the sticking point many teams end up facing down when trying to push in through Piano. So they're the ones who are going to have to crack this first, assuming, of course, that we see Piano all in round number one as we are downstairs inside of the kitchen. It's time to cook up a win for LFO, Tim. But will it be just desserts being dished out by Heroic? LFO starting us off on the bottom floor. They are on defence. Nothing wild in terms of their picks. All Yet. pretty straightforward. Um, well, no, there's no defender repick, there's, but um, we may have some attacker repick. We've got Thatcher, Maverick, and Nomad being brought in on the attacker repick. So Knox is going to be taken away, as is Zero. So that's, that's quite the shift from Heroic, really. I think in terms of like overall style, sure, but they mm. might change things up a little bit here, which looks to be the case with Sloth moving away from playing entry and towards a Maverick. Now, I'm really curious to see what role he plays here because on attack inside, Sloth has been the entry, but since last year, they moved him back to being more on the defensive side. He plays much further back. He'll play things like the Mirror. He'll play on a Mute sometimes because the team clocked last year and they said this themselves that a lot of their entry deaths were from Sloth being a bit too aggressive on the defense. So it's really interesting seeing him change between that kind of flex support on defense through to being the entry on the attack inside. And I think here you might just find him playing the Maverick like an entry for the most part. Mowgli and P4 just trying to hold aggressively on to the small bakery window there. The air jab going out from Grizzly is going to prevent them from pushing too far forward, but he knows that there's still a challenge to be made from the bottom of Red Stairs, so puts a couple of pot shots in there. Not going to have any joy now, then, if P4 peeks a little bit wider. He's going to get his man, but no, he doesn't look. Benja maybe getting away with one there, but P4 is still hovering. Des is still waiting for his opportunity. He wants to take a look here, and if he does, he might just get one. Benja still up on that half roof. Mowgli ultimately takes down Grizzly on Small Bakery window. So that is a great start for LFO. One coming back straight away, though. Sloth holding himself down here around Bakery against Shinka, who falls by the wayside. Bibu, the one man left standing inside of Bakery, wants to protect those muffins to the death. A bit of pressure coming in from on the outside, but elsewhere, it feels like the rest of the teams, or the rest of the teams of both of them, I suppose, putting their focus pretty much elsewhere. P4 up on the window, finds Uno for freebie, stood out in the open, all easy hunting coming in for PFO. P PFO? P4. <laughs> PFO, we'll go for that as a team name. Sloth going to find a beautifully tight angle there on to Bibu and Heroic doing a great job of keeping things level here at least in terms of man count every time a kill comes in there is always an answer and that's something that LFO might need to improve upon Mowgli won't be able to improve upon that shot let me tell you that was an absolutely beautiful peak there lightning reflexes to take his man down Gorgona pushing oh in my. through bakery prep sloth with another 2v2 and once again Heroic able to fight back LFO cannot keep letting them get themselves back into the round and there you go a double kill at the end is it for LFO as they are shut down out of the round and you got to say Des there was opportunities for them to win that one it was always them taking the advantage in terms of man count they kept getting the kill and they kept allowing it to be traded back 
You roll a D20 and you get a nat 20, pretty much Sloth is guaranteed to win the round for you solo. I can think of a couple over the last few weeks where he just marches through, gets an ace for himself, cooks up a flawless round, you name it. That was one of those. A 4K on a Maverick. Now, I'm a big fan of Maverick. Love his gun, love his kit overall. But that's a lot for a man that normally plays on the hard entry ops like a Finca or like a Niana. Beautiful first round. And up we go now to Bar Cocktail on the top floor. I'm going to have Laser Gates deployed on... Have what, Tim? Laser Gates deployed... Just, just, just one more time. Laser Gates! Thanks, mate. It got more and more intense each time, then, if you noticed. Is this like one of them things, like, on Twitter, where it's like, every time you like every, this picture, Every time I get a thousand it. likes, I widen... I'll widen their face. Yeah. <laughs> every time I get a thousand likes, I will become more northern. Like, 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 like... <laughs> Laser Gates! What's the most northern way you can possibly say that? I, it, the, thing, the problem is, Des, that it doesn't become northern anymore. It's just it becomes Noise. what people think is northern. And what do they think is northern, Tim? I'm not doing it, Des. <laughs> I won't play into this. Dance, that. monkey I dance! I won't play into the stereotype. <laughs> P4 still working on the setup of Piano. Bibu's got himself underneath now on the Aruni. It looks like he might be going all the way down to bottom floor, so certainly one to watch. He's, he is... A, thinking about it. We saw Gorgona have a bit of joy from White Door. Previously, Sloth is on the rappel, but you can see Iana just aiming down there at White Door, so aware that there's a possibility of danger from there. But he does keep turning his attention away, and if Bibu goes and has a look, he could have potentially had a little bit of joy. But I think he's got himself just back up the stairs and onto the mid floor. Yeah, Uno just providing a good bit of support there, like any support operator should be doing. Wonderful stuff to make sure Sloth at least gets a bit of pressure onto White, and up they go onto the roof. Now, Tim, we have seen a Ying on this site many a time, and normally what follows at some point in the round is a Ying drop coming in through the skylight. But to really open that up, first you want to get some control of piano, get control of cigar so you have the cross covered, you smoke out inside a cocktail, chuck a candela inside a storage, and then you make your play. So really heroic here, want to be focusing on the initial setup, making sure they've got the right amount of control, and then you make the play happen. Benji just trying to work the far side there. He's likely going to get himself up onto Cocktail Balcony window at some point with a potential of rappelling in there and making it difficult for them to hold on to the east side. We'll see if he sticks with that angle or moves away. Sloth is going to be the first to take the drop into the map. That's going to take him down red stairs, just takes a step forward, opens up the Banshee and clears it out, takes out further utility as well. Looking across towards, he's just absolutely decimating the information that could could be at hand for LFO here on the defence. Absolutely. Well, this is what they were looking for. Like I said, this control of the cigar area and an opening kill is a great way to get things moving. Sloth destroying so much utility on his push through and he's got that cross control. So now again, eyes turn somewhat in towards that Ying. I know there's obviously all five left alive. So imagine the plan, as you can see at the top of your screen here, is for Grizzly to go for a drop in. They just want to soften up these defences of LFO, force them back ever so slightly here. More nades starting to potentially come through, but all eyes are going to turn on towards that Ying. You're looking at them four candles and you're thinking, man, hell is going to start flying. Him. And with pretty much all the ADS is gone, this could be their step forward. Sloth though going down, that's not ideal. Here come the smokes, Candela's to follow as well. Drop from Grizzly, about to follow. This is it, this is the time to get the diffuser down. Oh. Benja is going to be dropped as he goes though, but still 2v2. Heroic able to keep themselves in things, it's all up to go. Gorna. 20 seconds left to go, 1v2, repels his way in, he's got two kills to find. He's going to take down the LMG, bulletproof cam, just remove a little bit of that information. But it looks like LF4, they're just going to be content to play the diffuser here. They know that he can't win without it. He's going looking for kills. They know exactly where he is. There's one inside of the shop. He knows that. He grabs for the diffuser. Can he find the kill? No! P4 able to find the kill with the pistol as he steps around the corner. And that's going to be Gorgona shut down and 1-0 on the scoreboard. Got fly by with that pistol. Cozy, cozy, cozy. So round two going the way of LFO. There we go. The one for one you're looking for. The split to keep things moving as we go. And I've got to say again, a lot of things coming down to the magician. Mowgli stepping forward into the rotate up to the mini bar, basically ignoring the Candela behind him and rather than running away opted to go aggressive. Caught the drop after finding one just a few seconds prior and really softened up that attack coming out of Heroic that meant LFO could get over the finish line. Now then into round three we're going to go to reading and fireplace. We've seen a few really interesting setups coming in on the mining side of things. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Sloth playing something weird around inside of mining when they come onto their defensive side but for LFO at least it's going to be this more standard reading setup. 
So top floor is going to be important once again. It's going to be heroic trying to get in there. Not too much on the piano side. I don't think it'll be too much effort to hold that deep into the top floor from LFO, but it is going to be all about bar and cocktail in particular, trying to keep hold of the top of white stairs, keep the rotations open so that you can potentially move defenders up and down at will as needed, and ultimately try and keep reading room safe. Once the vertical is in the control of the attackers, it's very easy for them to just get inside of that door. You don't have to go deep into side to, into side to get the diffuser down. It's just inside of the door mm. behind the bookcase. So it is dead easy to do once you've got the top floor. Right now, we've got Heroic just being cautious of any potential aggression coming out of LFO, but we haven't really seen any from them yet. And I'm not sure that we're going to. Not just yet, no, I don't think. I mean, maybe you will a bit later on as things press forward, especially knowing what P4 and Mowgli can be like. You look back to how this team played last year, it was quite one-dimensional, quite predictable. P4 was going to come crouch walking in through a doorway somewhere and then occasionally would either get himself three kills or just completely frozen out of a round. With Mowgli on side now, it gives them this kind of two-pronged double threat at the very front of their team that can be ludicrously powerful given the right opportunity. Here is starting things out though. Grizzly is the man that I'm keeping a close eye on because he's playing on that Nook. And Nook is fantastic naturally for dodging away around cameras or active gadget. The Hell Presence reduction means that she gets to avoid any cameras that would spot her out. So bulletproofs, default cams, you name it she can do a bit of damage, but sadly, operators can see you plenty fine, which means this man sat back in cocktail could yet be a threat. How quickly can Heroic clear out the top floor? We're going to see two X Kairos pellets used. That's an interesting one. Two X Kairos pellets are going to clear out the laser gate, and the attempt goes in for the Gon 6 to try and take down the bulletproof uh, camera. It gets eaten by an ADS, which wasn't picked up on by Heroic, and then the nade goes in and doesn't do the job either. So the bulletproof cam is still in position, and it's going to be up to Benja, potentially. It's <laughs> going to be another nade going in to try and get the job done. They were so sworn on getting rid of that bulletproof, and job is done. So now they can start putting more focus inside a bar and opening up things they need to. Right now, it's trying to force these players a little bit further. Bat Mowgli needs to be careful of those Havana holes that have been opened up as well. The man on Skylight potentially with an angle onto him if he's not too careful. But by the looks of it, these two both getting ready to drop back through the hatch now. They're just wasting as much time as they can, and burning through two minutes is a fantastic way of doing that, Tim. It is. Grizzly's going to push forward here. Avenger in support. They can team up, and they get the opener onto Bibu. Great start for heroic they've got vertical control they got 45 seconds they have the time that they need there's an opportunity for benji but he can't find the man through the joists in the floor just not opening up for him right and he's going to start working on more angles here to make it difficult for the defenders but heroic they need to start thinking about where that diffuser is going to go down absolutely benji getting to work on these verticals you saw the man you just saw the man he's to your left bro he's to your left you can see his head <laughs> he really wanted to lock up on getting that one inside a fireplace so it didn't drop bother changing away and turning to the man to his left but that should have been a free every day of the week. P4 picked up by a good where Benja fell short, his teammates there to have his back. A five versus three, now left in about 10 seconds or so. Uno going deep here against the secondary bookcase rather than the primary and looking to get that plant stuck down. Rise stepping in, protected on the vertical by his angel from above. It's Benja, plant is stuck, a four versus one. Heroic looking set to close out round three here as Shinka left scattered to the wind against these four members on all sides. Benja from on high, call him an angel of death from up there, Tim, two big kills in that round. Just showing exactly why the vertical is so important on that site. Able to shut down any attempt to get anywhere near Uno then or to make any sort of challenge towards the end of things. Trying to get back into sight. Shinka trying to fight his way in but absolutely no dice for him. Round four will be coming up and Heroic are looking pretty sharp so far on the attack. LFO if they want the first win that they need to take a step towards the major they got to start playing soon because this one could get away from them. They played that really well to begin with, I thought, too. Again, burning two minutes on that mm. top floor is a lot of time. And you're leaving Heroic a little bit stretched, but you saw the number of times they were exposed, the vertical angles. P4 should have been long dead to Benja, goes inside, dies to Gorgona. Just no real contest being given by, by the members of LFO looking skyward. And yeah, sure, it's hard to run around staring at the ceiling, knowing someone could come down white stairs and slaughter you, for example. But you've really got to be looking skyward in those cases. When you know you've conceded top floor control, you know exactly where that focus is going to be. So whether it's C4s, whether it's a gun, start pointing them skyward, boys.
action phase is underway and we are five versus five with a little bit of aggression from Mowgli as he's going to take out the dining window. I think it's more to put the frighteners on Heroic than anything and I think he was thinking of a similar plan <laughs> on the double window at Pillars there but thought better of it as bullets rained in Heroic being more than careful. There you go. That's exactly what the impact that he wanted by opening that window Mowgli. He just wanted to make them think twice every time they push themselves back from on that white wall, Uno just dumping the bounces. flashbangs in there to clear out any potential ADSs. The nade will clear out the ADSs. They are gone now, but the shield, more importantly, is still in place. Very safe clearance as well with the Habana. You know, barely exposing themselves to having to step a full man inside of the white door because there was a man sat at the bottom of brown. There still is, in fact. You go stepping inside of there, you are dead to rights. He'll take your head clean off your shoulders. Mowgli looking to do just that to so believe it was Gorg outside the window, but can't find him, almost losing his own life and scatters away into the rest of the map now at about 5 HP. Beautiful shot from Sloth, finds the header rise inside of VIP, and that starts to open things up here for the attackers. It's going to allow them into VIP, especially with Mowgli having been chased away, and he is super low health at the minute as well. He's going to have to keep himself out of the fight here because a breath on him will take him down. P4 all the way up on the top floor. He's had a little bit of joy from up here previously, but I'm sorry to tell you, P4, I don't think you're going to get away with the same again. He needs to get himself down and get himself into the fight, but Heroic, they need to be careful that he doesn't catch them on the flank. No, and again for Rise, really, this is kind of becoming the story of the season. He's getting involved in a lot of entry deaths, you know, 20 so far, 8 and 20 overall um, up until this game right now, and it's not looking any better, 0 and 4 so far in the game. Bit of a fall from grace for the man who was the second entry almost to P4 last year. Hasn't quite found his stride in the second half of this stage. Now we control a restaurant to see what they can do next. Mowgli has worked his way upstairs and if they try and push him through freezer here, Tim, that could spell disaster for Heroic. It could, P4. He's going to think about going down brown stairs here and I'm just not sure how aware they are. It looks like they might be. We've got the Nomad paying a bit of attention, but then the Iana of Sloth just moves across the bottom of those stairs without too much of a care and that could be a problem shinka shotgun looking to potentially peak ground a 180 on this bar um, yeah they've got that covered hero no 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 heroic were aware they were watching the brown stairs but then they've moved away tried to relocate and it gives p4 an opportunity but gorgona more importantly found oh to kill inside a site shinka with a big double door grizzly and sloth and all of a sudden with 3v3 20 seconds left to go mowgli inside a freezer super low health i'm not sure they're aware of his position yes they are uno on the hibana finds a kill benja closes it out and heroic they go 3-1 up and boy do they look good don't they just? And this is exactly what Fresh was saying on the desk earlier on, not just for this game, but back in the pre-show, is they look phenomenal. It's so hard to shut this team down when everyone can move with such confidence because I don't really know who you fancy taking a one-on-one -on -one against on that entire team. They're all phenomenal when it comes to these fights, especially when they're on their day as well. And I'll give it to LFO. The start of that round I thought was really well played. A man in freezer for support. They had one sat inside a VIP, one of the Browns there to challenge down into white. They had this triple threat coming in onto the side of the map where Heroic were trying to put all their efforts. But still, Heroic break it open, get in, are conscious of these flanks that might come out from LFO and just deal with it wonderfully. Barely anything the French side could do back against that. Heroic now up three and one. It's looking dicey if you're LFO and Tim. I would hate for this to come down to the last play day for them. They come up against Pones, I believe, in their last play day. And looking at how Pones played today against BDS, Exodus having a big day, it makes you feel nervous. Will they throw it again in the, in the dying I moments? Said at the beginning of the day, off broadcast that there was a potential opportunity for a little bit of a redemption for Eminem for them to have a late run and get themselves back into it. And I was I was broadly sh shouted down. Fresh, Fresh is still doing it. I was broadly shouted down when I suggested that a Rogue or an LFO maybe could lose their two remaining games and offer up an opportunity. If we turn out to be right, can we just mob Fresh but on the last play day? Now, we're not looking a million miles away from that possibility, at least coming into that final play day. And the thing that you've got to remember on that final play day, Des, is that Eminem play first against outsiders. And I, I keep saying Eminem. I'm focusing on Eminem because they're the bigger comeback. They're the bigger Cinderella story. But it's also outsiders as well that you've got to factor in here. Mm -hmm. They could well take one of these spots. So you've got Eminem and outsiders play in the first game. So if LFO lose here, both Rogue and LFO are going to be playing with a lot of pressure because one of those two teams will win that first game and so the spot will be taken and they will have to fight back to reclaim it 
And that's a lot of pressure to play under. LFO need to be getting this win here today. They do, they absolutely do. Otherwise, again, you don't want to leave it all down to that last play day. It's fun for the viewers, but absolutely not if you are a player. Let's see how this setup goes, though. 60 seconds in, still a bit of work coming out from Heroic, who I will comment have been pretty slow in the openings of most of these rounds, leaving things until the last 60 seconds or so to really start making their move in terms of getting themselves set up for an execute. They've been very patient in the early rounds so as not to get caught out by LFO, diligent with the drones. I say that, they're only down to three drones left in this round, and they've had them chewed through in the early round by LFO. Yep, serious lack of information. LFO, so far you've commented on it yourself, Des. In theory, their game has been great. Theoretically, you know, the setups on paper, it's been all right. It's been the execution that's been the problem. Mm. Heroic have been able to win the fights and pick them apart. This time, it's going a little bit better for LFO. You just feel like they're holding on more. They were wasting more time. They're giving less opportunity to Heroic. So they're starting to find something here. They're starting to find the execution that oh. they needed to gel those strategies together. Now then, Nade goes out, not going to find anybody. The silhouette we could see was back Baited in freezer. They, were, they did, they did. It happens from time to time, all the way back in freezer. So nice and safe, the Malusit of P4. And right now, Heroic are stalling out. Oh, sorry, I mean, sorry, LFO. <laughs> That's a classic. It's my bad. That's on me. Classic cast the curse. Mowgli going for the swing, and Sloth is just all too wise to his antics by this point. When you know the tricks yourself, magicians, they aren't all that impressive. Benja looking at trying to work his way down through white here, but the smoke tower inside a cocktail, the drop might be coming in here. And with no Mowgli to step forward and go aggressive, these smokes are going to be able to cover the drop. Uno into another P4. He's holding so tight. They know about him here. They haven't got a clue. Finds one for himself. Wants to finish the kill and almost gets chased down. Gorgona into another. P4 is the of HP, but the miscoms are not there. The man's inside a freezer. He finds a second. Can he get the close out here by himself, though? Three members left with 10 seconds to play. In comes the push. He's full white screened. How have they not seen him? They must know. They thrown right past him, surely. It's right in front of your face, man. What's going on? Can find one more? No, he can't. The plan is down. They can't quite find the man. P4, 5 HP and a dream. One on backs. One tucked inside a piano. It's been an absolute clown for Yesta, but Grizzly finds the kill and Heroic get the round. I'm not sure what just happened in that <laughs> round. And that... Oh, and, that's, and that's a problem, because I'm here to tell you what happened in that round. But it was just absolutely... If they can get the same again here, I wouldn't be too nervous if I were them. But for LFO, you've got to be more disruptive, Tim. More up in their face, more up in their grill, trying to bring down a member or two earlier on. Ideally, get rid of Benja and get rid of that sledgehammer. It is. Uh, right now, LFO are limping through this game. There's, you know, there's, there's no other way to put it, I'm afraid. Um, you know, we want to see more out of them. Hopefully, we will see more out of them. We know that they're better than this. We've seen them play better. But as you say, a number of players just really struggling to get going. BB mm. on one kill, rise on zero kills. It's just tough for them today. And Heroic are not giving them space to breathe. And they are, as the sort of team they are, the professional team they are, they are coming in and just not giving them an inch right now. They are just keeping right on top of them. As they should. Top four start then. Hatch is being opened up first. It's going to be the same thing as we're used to here, folks. It's going to be that drop inside the top of red. Work your way down through piano to get control of white. Force the guys out through bar as well. And ideally, LFO should be dropping down through the hatch without losing a man. They did lose one last time. I think it was Bibu who hung around Lumber a little bit too long and got himself picked off with the last few seconds of drops to come through. And then it became all about those vertical kills. P4 being hunted down by Gorgona and by Benja. Before you know it, a five versus three going entirely the way of Heroic. Grizzly, you're looking to get a bit cheeky with those Twitch drones, but caught out, seen out there by the side of LFO, drone gone. Just going to hold at the angle from the skylight, see if he can catch anybody out. Looking for tools, not going to find them as Mowgli manages to dance away from the danger as the bullets rain in through the soft wall. Flashes will come in, looking to clear utility. It's just looking to prevent um, the nade being taken out and they want to get rid of the shield, but for the time being, Sloth is just more concerned about that bulletproof camera. We've seen it cause problems before and it looks like it could be doing again. ABS is going to take out. He just needed to wait for that to be burnt. The nade comes through, we hear the explosion, but the shield is still in place. Oh, gets rid of the bulletproof and the shield there in nice. one go. Beautiful stuff. And I think they also get rid, of the, well, get rid of the jammer in this case. They can also get the wall opened up. Sure enough, there we go. So three bits of utility with one nade. That's a good ROI. Certainly 
is. It's the maximisation of utility that you're looking for. Benja opening up the angles that they need. Now he dare not step into this white corridor just yet. He needs to know that Lumber is clear before they go in to do that. And that's a safer way of getting rid of that bulletproof camera. Gonsik's going to take it down. This time learning that they needed to get rid of the ADS first. But Mowgli Bibu still holding on to this position. 50 seconds left to go and they are not letting go of top floor. Think about the timing again. It was about that 60 second mark that we saw LFO with the full control. I wouldn't be too surprised if we've got uh, Benja getting to work on the vertical already. In fact, he's gone through half of his sledgehammer. So he's getting to work on the floor either around storage or in bar rather than trying to fully clear out. Cocktail here, P4 stepping in with one. Shinkara C4 coming back. We called for those before. And finally, they showed up to the party. Two kills coming in for LFO. And this Tim starts to feel like when they can get something out of this round, given they were in a four versus three. But Uno, bit of a double team coming in there. He sees the feet step and across and this is where LFO needs to be careful once again of that vertical control that has been established. LFO should be able to hold on here. 12 seconds left to go and Heroic have to get inside oh, but Sloth. what a pre-fire from Sloth. That might just open things up. Seven seconds left to go. The diffuser's going down. Uno's managed to get in sight. That spray down could be important. P4 with a big uh, double Gork. prevents the diffuser being put down and P4 able to win out the round. Unfortunate. <laughs> Cork was trying to challenge onto the doorway as well as Sloth was walking up to it. Gets a team kill, dies himself. Everything just falling apart there in the dying couple of seconds. But to give it to LFO again, they've wasted a lot of time there, Tim. We said they need to extend that top floor, get more up in the faces of the members of Heroic. And I feel the biggest impediment for Heroic in many of those rounds was the utility. That bulletproof in White Corridor is going to be their nemesis for years to come. Just feels like the amount they were throwing at it, gone sixes, nades, impacts coming out of Zofia, you name it. They were just really struggling to get it clear, but they identified the importance and how it had to be gone. Absolutely that. And honestly, I feel like LFO probably don't feel too hard done by here. To come away 4-2 on that half where Heroic felt completely dominant most of the time, it's really not the end of the world for them at the minute. So LFO, they just need to sort of reassess now, calm things down. They're on the attack. They can dictate the pace. They can come in and do the information work. They can be the ones knowing where the attack is going, where the defenders are holding. They should be able to play a little bit more confidently now. If they can get this first round of the second half, it could be a big, big start for them. Well, here we've got a Nook coming along now. Expecting to see that go crouch walking its way up white stairs, potentially. We'll see where P4 heads for, because on the other side, there is some stiff opposition. And Fresh, I'm, so, I'm sure, is absolutely delirious right now that we have got a clash on side. It's Gore bringing it along. He's straight in the DMs. Like, I've got some tits for you, mate. Diamond 2 player, by the way. Monty Clash main. I'll show you what I can do on this. We'll see if Gorg has quite the same impact. Single-handedly bringing shields back to relevance. Honestly, don't give him that accolade. <laughs> 30 seconds in. We don't have anybody inside of the map yet for LFO. Hatches are being opened up. Droning is underway. Interestingly, Mowgli sat on the cocktail repel already with the Iana. So that is quite aggressive. Ooh. Stands P4. Big and opener. He He's going to take Sloth down. He can't find a second, though, as Grizzly manages to get the trade. Rise trades back, and it is back and forth. Two versus four now as Bibu gets Gorgona. Rise and Bibu both getting themselves started in this round, and it's something that LFO desperately oh, yeah. needed. Mowgli, he gets Benja, and all of a sudden, LFO are looking pretty good right now. If they can take this first round, they're only one round behind and they will have a little bit of confidence. Bibu starts to get that diffuser down, almost certainly going to stick it as it's all up to Uno. 1v4 and there's not much he can do. He's castled into this corner, Des. That's the problem. You locked yourself in there. It's one of those, you're not stuck in here with me, I'm stuck in here with you. Literally the reverse of what you're used to hearing. It's not looking too good for Uno left in this one versus four. And LFO just catching them off guard with a little bit of pace in their first attacking round is a great way to be starting the half. There will be no comeback from this one, I can assure you. Try as Uno might. A smoke coming out just to deter them ever so slightly. But a bit of a win, bit of a dream to come through here to bring down four members and get the defuse itself. LFO with their first attacking round. I've got a feeling that we could be in for another long game here. We saw BDS go all the way to 12 rounds, and it wouldn't surprise me to see similar here. Only one round between them, and LFO looking good on that opening attack. If they can keep that momentum now, they might well just get themselves level here, and then it is anybody's game. Heroic, they're going to be looking to get themselves a defence lock down. They're not going to go back to bar again. It's going to be straight down to that bottom floor and into kitchen. 
This is part of my concern, right? You're saying, oh, heroic. Uh, they've got to come fight the way back in. LFO only one round short on the attacking side. Good first round. Yeah, sure. I'm just not convinced they'll be able to keep that up. I think heroic here will really toughen up on the defensive side. You give them one round to get a little bit rushed out, caught out by the nook. They will not let that happen again. I think this is where heroic probably accelerate this through to say a 7 4 victory here. Maybe give LFO one round win in the offside. But outside of that, I think heroic show why they are number one, why they, they are the only EU team qualified to the major at the moment and get a nice dominating progression through. We're touching on soft though, because I mentioned him back in that first half. Here you're seeing what we spoke about. Attacking side, entry. Defensive side, much more hunkered down, playing these flex supports, digging your way in, playing things like the Echo, the Mirror, the Mute, things along those lines that are much more supportive. Grizzly, the one getting out on the entry here. He's not having the best game so far, but he is joined out there by Benja and by Gorg. So they've got quite a presence out in the map, and there it is, Gorg, straight out onto Rise. This man feels cursed. He has been the entry death so many many times this stage. I'm pretty sure in the stats, he is the guy with the most entry deaths in the entirety of EUL right now. And that's not looking to get any better in this game. And the thing is, I feel for Rise there because that could have been anybody. That's just Gorgona running out and just taking a shot at anybody who's there. And it just happened to be Rise who was rounding the corner at that point in time. I know all about that feeling, Rise. Don't worry, that is every single death that I take, it feels like. Rise off the board and more importantly, two nades and that sledge utility gone. Let's not forget we're downstairs, there's we're in kitchen. They're going to want to open up that floor above them and wow. it's going to be a real difficulty now. I mean, he's just gone through three drones there by himself here, our Sloth, and he's down to, well, sorry, the other side are down to just four drones left on side. Nade's coming through, really under a lot of pressure here, and always playing on the Yokai, on the Echo, sorry. I really feel nervous when it's an Echo being this aggressive, because if you die, sure, you've still got the info coming in from those Yokais, but no Sonic Blast, which admittedly has a niche use case anyway. He's just doing so much work here, Tim, and LFO need to get him out. They've got nades on side they can make use of, but so far, nothing's coming singing. Honestly, even if Sloth loses his life in here and they lose the use of the Yokai, our drones at this point it doesn't matter he's done his job he's taken out drone after drone selma after selma oh and he just keeps on going they have to deal with him if they want to push through bakery well, they can't. They just simply can't. He is a brick wall, and he's standing there saying, come on then, boys, come and have a go. Can't do nothing. Chewed through all their drones, survived nades coming in, has done everything. And wasted a good 60 to 90 seconds inside of there by himself as well. Shinka and Bibu now scrapping for an answer, seeing what they can find. Shinka with the right idea. There is a man on front door. It is Benja. Very rare that you see a player beat him to the punch, but in this case, Shinka has done just that. Three versus two. One minute left to go, Bibu. He's just trying to slow the pace down, have a look into Bakery, but guess what? Slow is still there and he is adamant that he's holding on to this door with his life. Bibu has already taken a little bit of damage from him, I think, whilst trying to challenge on to that very door. I think he's going to move around and maybe just try to join Shinka here at the main door and try an alternative little push in instead. Shinka just wary of the potential of anybody inside a court check, but he's looking to the wrong side. There is somebody in there, but they're off to the left and stood on a table and it's not going to be an easy challenge for Shinka if he moves in because that will be an unexpected angle and if he moves down there, the Banshee will signal his approach. Sloth goes to the secondary. Can he get his man? Yes, he can. He hits the deck, goes prone, finds him. Gorgona on the last. And Heroic, they manage to get themselves around 5-3. It's one of those that you look at, Tim, and just say, realistically, they should be winning that kind of situation against Sloth. When you're thrown drone Absolutely. after drone after drone at him, you've got nades still left on side. You've already thrown some at him, but there's no... I mean, he's even expecting a bakery, a North Bakery side push. He's even turning to the window, expecting some kind of challenge that just never comes. And he's behind a bookcase that you can shoot through. Mm. Even knocks himself up a little cheeky hole that he can see through. It can't, he can't hold that position. He cannot be allowed to hold that position. It is as simple as that. Sorry, LFO. He cannot be allowed. No. Nope. Round number nine, five three. We have Heroic in the lead, and LFO could be making themselves a little bit of a problem going forward. The, the one positive for LFO is if they look around, Rogue have lost. So that's at least something for them. And Rogue can be sat at home thinking the same thing watching this, because at least if they both lose, then it's not as bad for the other, because it drags more teams into that conundrum. There's more possibilities then to be able to get yourself through. So there is that at least, I would suppose, for both of these right now. But Heroic, they're going to be defending. This time it's going to be Reading Room. 
Well, I feel like we've kind of been here before, Tim, and I spoke about in that foot. Well, we have been here before literally a few rounds ago when LFO were on the defensive side. And at the time I remarked, more C4s needed. They needed more things to be able to deny those verticals. Benja and Gorgona, just an absolute nightmare above them playing on the third floor. So what have you got on heroic side here? You've got those two C4s on side. You've still got things like the Goyo to burn through a bit of time as well. So they are playing for those more explosive tools here, things that can burn through a lot of time. A smoke on side as well just really screams to me, this team want to be playing this denial game. Slow Slow down LFO as much as you can, keep them at bay, and just watch them start starving out when the clock starts to run towards zero. Shinko with a tight angle from the top of the air conditioning machine. He's not going to catch anybody out, I don't think, but for the time being, just preventing any aggression up towards that hatch. P4 sends in the twitch drone. Is he going to spot the man on piano? Is he going to check? Mm, I'm not sure if he did mm. or not. I don't think he may be so close enough around. You could make the guess because the drone got taken out, but there was somebody ahead of it as well. So it'll be interesting to see if they know about the player in piano. Grizzly going to take a lot of damage there. His position is not going to be easy to hold on to, and Mowgli quite rightly goes in and gets the opener. Downs go corner as well. That is a big entry 10 seconds from Mowgli. It's exactly what LFO needed. Up on the table as well. Dodges out that C4 from below. Bibu's found two in the round before. Ben just swings out, gets one. Rise there to trade back. LFO again have just kind of forced their way into the defensive line of Heroic here and just broken open that cocktail hold. Beautiful push coming in overall from Mowgli, making things happen for this team. We talk about him all the time, but he really has done the goods for them so far in this round, Tim. He has. He's delivered. And that's exactly what they needed. Four versus two now and plenty of time to go. Very difficult for Heroic to hold on to this round from here. And LFO at least trying to keep themselves in touch. It's all down to Uno and Sloth. They're downstairs. They're going to try holding on to that for as long as possible. Uno's going to have the shotgun onto the white stairs. He's looking for a close range challenge, if at all possible. But it's likely to be expected that he will be in that position. Rise just applying a bit of pressure. He knows that there's one inside but nearly loses his life, does he? He's down to about 10 HP. Uno, he's getting aggressive on the white stairs. Maybe this is what it needs from Heroic, but there comes the Nitro. Oh. There's not going to be an opportunity as Bibu reacts quicker and manages to get the kill. It's all up to Sloth, 1v4, and this is a nightmare for him. 40 seconds left to hold on. Right at 10 by Uno, but really thought he would have won that one as well. There we go, these verticals again, just proving an absolute nightmare for the defensive side. and. We did see for a brief moment. It really did open up the path for LFO to be able to go in and just casually get kill after kill and close it out. So Heroic, they're going to need to win a couple of gunfights. That needs to be the big change for them here because they gave up a few too many deaths to LFO last time around. A very similar setup to what we saw coming out of LFO as well. That bulletproof camera in the white uh, corridor is going to be a pivotal piece of it, no doubt. Not forgetting that when LFO were on the defensive side, Heroic were throwing everything at it to try and clear it away. Nades, well, nades, Sophia, impacts, you name it, gone sixes, all raining on through. We'll see if the same thing comes out from LFO or if they've got a bit of a different plan to deal with it in mind. Tim, I do want to touch on the ludicrous number of claymores that we have got on side right now. There are six in the back pockets of LFO. That's just how scared of jump outs they are. Well, that's silly. That, that, it feels excessive. I feel like four is enough. Like, <laughs> one for east side, three for west side is probably okay. I would agree. I think, you know, at the point where you've got four claymores down, there's probably more valuable utility that you can be bringing along. Um, you know, you can't throw a claymore into a room, for example, to burn out any defensive utility, that sort of thing. So there's certainly better options, potentially. They've got nades on site to complement those claymores, um, but they could have difficulty delivering those nades where they need to go without any flashes or smokes to clear out any associated utility, considering there is Jaeger and Wamai on the side of the defenders. Really? Realistically, you're relying quite heavily on P4 here playing the Thatcher to help you in clearing those things out, disabling away the magnets, the ADSs, you name it, so on, so forth. But it's about this initial push in. Really looking for Mowgli to do a bit of damage here now that he stepped his way inside of Cigar Shop. Very similar to what Sloth did when they were on their attacking side earlier on. Take, uh, took out a lot of utility for free, thinking about the mute jammers that he saw, the ADSs on his march forward. Of course, again, you can see that bulletproof camera inside of White. They're trying to find a new way of clearing through here. Magnets going off, which should start clearing things away quite easily. Mowgli trying to aggress into piano, looking through bathroom. He's got the line of sight that he wants onto White, but he's not going to find anybody because Heroic are not going to push forward and challenge that much, just pinging out the utility, the Banshee that's going to prevent the movement in from Cigar Shop and holding his angle now onto the Maestro spot. 
For the time being, Heroic are going to get aggressive. Mowgli's going to find the opener. Manages to get the kill on to Sloth, who was just a little bit in no man's land there. Des got himself right up to that pixel door, but just wasn't ready, wasn't in a position to fight. And I don't think he honestly knew that Mowgli was as advanced as he was in position there. Benja holding himself at the bottom of Red Stairs, and I think this is where we're going to see those extra claymores, just preventing him from moving up, but he clears it out with ease. And this could be a big flank here. He gets there himself one, diffuser down, 2v2, Des. And nothing else that can really do. 30 seconds is still a long time to play, but P4 and Bibu have now got to retake ground they previously had, and they have no idea where the man is. No drones out on the map really, and use for them here. Two still in back pocket, but unused. Benja finds another, and that flank is going to be the defining factor in round 10. P4 has got it all to do, and I don't see him simply finding himself both of these last two kills against Grizzly and against Benja. Not when there's only 10 seconds on the clock. It's a bit of ring around the roses. He finds one, but the man of Grizzly is long disappeared. He's long on the down stairs. P4 not even going to bother with the diffuser here. He wants to find the kill, but that clock's going to hit zero. Heroic are going to take round 10. Easy as that. Heroic playing it very, very nicely and it was just a beautiful flank. Ultimately Benja able to take down the Claymore. We commented on how many they'd brought at the beginning, Des. Four for the outside and then they still had leftovers for the inside to use on red stairs, but if it's going to get a shot out, it ain't much point being there. And it was just in a position that allowed Benja to do that. There was a bit of noise at the same time and it just covered up the whole process as of him taking it down and it was pretty easy from there on out for Heroic so that is going to give them their match point opportunity you said that it could be 7-4 Des and it's looking like you might just be right yeah it's boiling up to that point isn't it really despite the efforts of P4 especially set at 13 and 6 on the side of LFO a couple of big rounds out of him but this has kind of always been my, my fear and my worry about LFO. I commented on back on the desk how back against Eminem, which LFO did lose out in the very end. There were three rounds in a row in which Mowgli got a 4K and won the round. And it feels if you're relying on these two players to be the ones that just win you round solo, it's kind of the same criticism that we leveraged against G2. You can't just keep on counting on players like Doki and Citizen to walk through three or four players. It might work against some lesser teams here in EUL, but on that big stage at Majors, when the other teams can do that, but I've got a lot more to them, it simply isn't going to hold up. And for LFO, clearly not quite enough to hold up against Heroic. In we go then to potentially our last round. It is round 11. And Heroic have really got themselves dug in once again around, around VIP down here on the downstairs. Now, when they were attacking, Heroic were really good at breaking this hold open. They had those nades coming in through the garage wall. They had pressure coming in from Restaurant. Despite LFO committing three players out towards that east side, it just simply wasn't enough. So I want to see how good LFO are at breaking this hold open. I kind of want to see LFO push onto it. I agree with you. I want to see that happen because last time it was all about Bakery yep. and they just didn't get anywhere. Nope. This time we're going to see White opened up. The wall has had a Selma applied to it. Oop. P4, just a little wonky on his Twitch drone there. Going to lose it as well after taking down the proximity alarm. P4 looking to move in, got the angle in towards VIP Benja. He is going to come under a lot of pressure here. The question is how quickly and how well can they deal with it? Only just getting away with that there. The honor moving in, Benja's ready for this peak. He knows it's going to come, but Mowgli able to find him through the soft furnishings. Takes the man down, beautiful headshot. That's going to be a big start for LFO. Three entries in a row now for Mowgli, by the way. Been on fire in these last few. Bringing down big, na big names as well. Sloth in the prior round. Benja in this one. Definitely two players you want off the board given how they've been playing so far today. Mowgli now with control of Bar. And I've got to give it to him, by the way. Very good at getting those entries and immediately taking the ground that's been uncovered. You know, there was a chat on Twitter a couple of weeks ago about how hard the entry roll is, how you're relying on information. It's all about the Twitch reflexes, about taking massive uh, areas of control inside the map. Mowgli is definitely up there, one of the best in the business doing that in, in EUL so far. As you said, just moves in very confidently behind those kills. Gorgona, he's going to find Bibu though, and that is going to leave us now 4v4. One minute 10 left to go. Plenty of time for LFO, but not enough time that they can afford to burn any. They need to start thinking about exactly how they get in. We're going to have a smoke canister deployed into Freezer to prevent any push into there, but they're just not ready. They're just not in a position to be able to do that yet, and that's unfortunate for Gorgona. Just looking to get himself down the brown stairs on a potential flank. We've seen how impactful they can be for heroic but the drone will spot him out so he's just going to have to bide his time and hold back Mowgli swings sees the man but just can't connect and Grizzly he's able to keep on fighting from inside of sight Gorgona does go for that flank thinks second thinks twice about it as he has to move back with the pressure mounting P4 gets sloth Nade comes in not going to clear Gorgona out he gets oh, one he gets again. two you can't allow it Des. they've just thrown a Nade there 
Again, it comes away. A big flank from Heroic Venger previously. Gore going here to basically close it out. And again, Mowgli has found the entry in the last three rounds. LFO have always started on the front foot, but simply can't get over the finish line. Finker, Finker, Shinka even, turns around and finds one. Does he know the last? He knows where he is. He's inside. Can he find the kill? Oh, almost got away with it. But Uno with a shotgun kill at the close. A few wonderful rounds coming out from Heroic means they close things out seven and four. And LFO's major run looks even more treacherous. Heroic continuing to fight to keep a hold of that top spot to lock it down and make sure they are the European number one going 